This is European concept of a sixth generation fighter jet. In July of 2017, France and Germany announced that they would be jointly developing a new sixth generation fighter jet to replace their aging fourth generation fighters. This announcement led me to ask what is a sixth generation fighter jet? And when did we start classifying fighter jets in generations anyways? But before we understand what a sixth generation fighter jet is, we first have to understand what a fighter jet generation even is. The term generation, when referring to fighter jet classifications, first came into use in the 90s. It was used to separate major leaps in technological advances of historical fighter jets. According to the Royal Australian's Air Force's Air Power Development Center Bulletin, or the RAAFA PDCB. That's quite a mouthful. I know. We're working on it. They define an aircraft generation to be used to, quote, make sense of the leapfrogging improvements in performance to jet fighter aircraft brought about through major advances in aircraft design, avionics, and weapon systems. After Lockheed Martin started calling their F-22 and F-35 fifth generation fighters, the terms of aircraft generations have become really widespread. Although Aviation Week's Bill Sweetman says that Lockheed actually got this phrase from Russia, who were using the term to describe the F-22. The true defining qualities of what defines each aircraft generation really depends on kind of who you ask. So in this video, I'm gonna use three different sources that have similar definitions that seem to be the most widely accepted. I'm also gonna give some examples of some of the more commonly accepted aircraft in each individual generation. In 2009, the Air Force Magazine came out with a list of what they defined each aircraft fighter jet generation to be and which aircraft fall into those categories. They even went as far as to propose what the qualities of a sixth generation fighter jet would be. According to Air Force Magazine, a first generation fighter jet had to possess the technological leap of having jet propulsion. Duh. The other two sources also provide dates for their generation classifications. For example, the first generation is generally accepted to be around the mid 40s to the mid 50s. And obviously, all three definitions include the Messerschmitt 262, which was the first operational fighter jet. The Royal Australian Air Force's, uh, I'm just going to call it the Air Power Development Center from now on. Both the Air Power Development Center and Aerospace Web define the first generation of aircraft as subsonic aircraft that have similar qualities to that of their piston engine counterparts. They also specified that they had no radar and no guided weapons. The second generation of fighter jets took place from the mid 50s to the mid 60s, and their main qualifying technological leap was that they could travel at supersonic speeds. Supersonic. These aircraft also featured semi-active guided missiles. The second generation included aircraft like the F-104 and the MiG-21. The defining characteristic of a third generation fighter jet was the multi-role fighter jet, meaning, for example, the F-4. The F-4 was used both as an air-to-air -air fighter and also a bomber. This was one of the most produced fighter jets of all time. Third generation aircraft often had a noticeably larger payload capacity than their second generation counterparts. This enhanced their ability to be a multi-role platform. Now the fourth generation is where it really starts to get messy. So many, if not most sources, will divide the fourth generation into several different categories. This is not only to justify the sheer quantity of fourth generation fighters, but also the large time frame in which they were developed. So the Air Force magazine divides this category into three separate categories, four, four plus, and four plus plus. Meanwhile, the Air Power Development Center and aerospaceweb.org divide this only into two different categories, 4 and 4.5. So the baseline fourth generation is generally understood to have taken place from the late 70s to the late 80s. Most of these sources agree that one of the defining qualities of what makes a fourth generation fighter is their incredibly high maneuverability. And most of them agree that the F-15 and the F-16 fell squarely into that category. Both Aerospace Web and the Air Power Development Center place the early variants of the F-18 Hornet in this category as well. These baseline fourth generation aircraft are still widely in use. The next category, the 4 Plus or the 4.5 depending on who you ask, is defined as having a slightly reduced radar signature, in addition to the fourth generation qualities that we previously described. 
The Air Power Development Center goes into a little more detail about what defines this half generation. They say that this 4.5 generation includes radar absorbing materials and thrust vectoring. They even went as far as to explain the reason that they split this generation into two, saying that from the late 80s to the late 90s, there was a significant decrease in military spending. Planes that fall into the 4.5 or 4 plus generation include the Eurofighter Typhoon, the Saab Gripen, and the FA-18 Super Hornet, not to be confused with the F-18 Hornet. Comment down below if you know the difference between the Super Hornet and the Hornet. And if you watch my How I Became an Aerospace Engineer video, you'll know that I wanted to be a pilot, and this was the plane that I wanted to fly. The Air Force Magazine's 4++ category includes increased stealth as their qualifying characteristic of what defines this category of generation. The aircraft that they put in this category was the F-15 Strike Eagle. Again, not to be confused with the F-15 Eagle that I mentioned earlier. And this brings us to our modern day fighter jet, the fifth generation aircraft. As I mentioned earlier, there's more of a consensus on what defines a fifth generation fighter jet. The fifth generation fighter jets were all developed after the year 2000. And perhaps their most defining feature is their all aspect stealth, meaning that they have an incredibly small radar cross section and they're considered low observable. They become invisible to the eye. Another feature of fifth generation fighter jets is they all have internal weapons bays. And another defining feature of a fifth generation fighter jet is super cruise, meaning they can fly at supersonic speeds without the use of an afterburner. There's currently only three operational fifth generation fighter jets in use. The first fighter jet was the F-22 Raptor. This air superiority fighter jet still has unmatched speed and maneuverability. And it also happens to be the world's most expensive fighter jet ever at a price tag of only $150 million. The next fifth generation fighter was the Joint Strike Fighter, the F-35 Lightning. This incredibly versatile aircraft was developed for three branches of the US military and various militaries across the entire globe. And the third and final fifth generation fighter is the Chinese J-20, which brings us to the future, the sixth generation fighter. With the exception of Russia, almost all other countries have abandoned hope of ever creating a fifth generation fighter. Which begs the question, who's going to develop a sixth generation fighter and who will be first? Not only that, but it also begs the question as to what will define a sixth generation fighter? Like I mentioned earlier, only the Air Force magazine proposed a possible definition as to what a sixth generation fighter will be. Amongst their proposed features of what a sixth generation fighter will have, they list extreme stealth, highly networked, optionally manned, and directed energy weapons. Personally, I foresee the optionally manned and the highly networked as being the most probable of these characteristics. This means that it's pretty likely that the sixth generation fighter will not only be able to transmit vast amounts of data from the battlefield, but it will also be able to remotely pilot UAV wingmen. Directed energy weapons are a plausible feature of a sixth generation aircraft as they have been successfully tested from ship platforms. However, due to their incredibly high energy demands and high weight, I don't see them as being ready to be implemented on these aircraft at this point. Currently, the German Air Force is working with Airbus to develop this sixth generation fighter. However, it's not likely to enter operation until at least the 2030s or maybe even 2040s. Currently, very little is known about this fighter jet other than it will be a twin seat and a system of systems like I talked about piloting remotely other drones. Several other countries have also announced their intentions of developing sixth generation fighter jets such as the United States, China, Russia, Italy, Sweden, and Japan. As for the US sixth generation fighter jet, most likely we won't see it until at least the 2030s. And I for one can't wait until we finally get to see what these sixth generation fighters can do and how they're implemented into a battle situation. I really enjoy making content like this, but it does take a lot of research and development to get this end product. So if you wouldn't mind, please consider subscribing to my channel. I make videos about aircraft and spacecraft. So if you enjoy that kind of content, please consider subscribing. If you've liked this video and if you learned something new, please give it a like as well. Thank you so much for watching and Godspeed.